Hi everybody, I'm Carrie Simpson. And I'm Ron Gray. And we're bringing you a very important edition of Culture Guard today, uh, Ron. Um, one that we think is important because we want to equip parents with knowing what's going on in the schools. And of course our position increasingly here at Roadkill Radio Universe is that parents, good parents, must evacuate the public education system unless we see dramatic change, dramatic change coming in the form of vouchers so you can choose what school your kids go to you can pick your teachers there has to be a dramatic alter i don't see any sign of that on the horizon yeah. well, okay well so in the meantime in the meantime this is what you need to know guard parents. your kids guard your kids don't guard us sell your kids and, and guard your kids and don't put your false hope in good teachers yes most of the teachers are great but they're part of a system and most of those good teachers don't want to rock the boat that's too bad because that puts your child in jeopardy. We're going to talk very specifically about this movement for anti-bullying programs, Ron, because so much is coming in under this ruse, and it is—it's—it's it's not uh, anything to do with bullying. If we really wanted to deal with bullying, we'd be sending notices home to parents about how to educate your kids to be kind to each other. We'd be giving teachers the authority and the mandate and the requirement because teachers up until now have had that mandate, have had that requirement to act when they see unkind acts happening mm. in the class. Treat one another with common decency. All of these supposed problems go away. Well, but there's a problem to that because uh. there is a growing understanding of a form of bullying that's okay. And that's against <laughs> and that's civil morality. <laughs> the, the slur, homophobia, targets the people that it's now okay to bully. And that is anyone who disagrees, for whatever good reasons, doesn't matter, anyone who disagrees with the current political correctness. And we've seen that. We've seen cases before the Human Rights Commission now where teachers are being bullied because they won't put up a, a rainbow sign That's in right. their classroom. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of things are happening. But the impetus for this discussion comes from Premier Clark's recent announcement that she's going to shift all kinds of money into anti-bullying programs. Not that we don't already have them, folks. This is nothing new. This is not a new initiative. This is nothing new. But what is new in this initiative is this little toy called an app that your kids are going to be able to access on their iPhones or their smartphones or their iPads. Now, what concerns us here at Roadkill Radio and I think across Canada is that this app is designed so your kids can become narcs now, snitches. They can report all these signs of bullying. And in Quebec people, the Quebec government has brought in a measure. What do they call it? Oh, the, the policy against homophobia. Right. Yeah. So they have a homosexual activist group launched a registry of homophobic acts with the funding from the Quebec government's Justice Department. Okay, this is something not to ignore people. This is happening. We're going to see it creep into all these schools. We see it. I mean, it's just under another guise with this app, right? That's only less than half a million dollars out of the seven million dollars that the provincial government, the Quebec Justice Ministry, has earmarked just to target homophobes, which is a slur. Yeah. Well, okay, now think about this. We want kids to report bullying, but there's no clear definition about what bullying is. Why are we getting kids to start narking on each other? I mean, it was bad enough with the 1-800 hotline where kids were reporting their parents, and I certainly dealt with enough false apprehension issues as a result of that. Now we're going a step further. But Ron, underlying all of this, and this is the, the point that I really want to drive home to parents, you need to know this. You know, for years people were saying, Oh, people who are opposed to uh, gay curriculums, being in the schools, are bigots. You know, you can't make a kid gay, blah, blah, blah. All the nonsense from the liberal media, Bill Good, Rafe Mayer, all the, you know, what I call the gay dumb idiots, right? But what we see here and what we have always said is this issue is bigger than that. This issue is about undermining institutions within society. It's about undermining your values, your morals, your beliefs. And certainly now we are being proven to be correct because we see a great movement towards more kids having sexually transmitted diseases, yes. behaviors that are unacceptable once to our family structures and civil morality. 
now suddenly we're having problems. Oh, we have to bring in more bullying programs. But go ahead. Carrie, can I uh, just, this thing that you mentioned, the, the propaganda that says you can't make a kid gay, that is destroyed actually by the census statistics because about two decades ago when they first started including sexual orientation as an element in the census, it was less than one and a half percent of the population. Under two decades of the incessant drumbeat of pro-gay propaganda, it is now in excess of two and a half percent. What is increasing it, if not this drumbeat of propaganda? It surely is not genetics, because, as I've often said, if any organism from a buffalo to a butterfly had a gene that predisposed it to non-reproductive behavior, that gene would die out in a generation. Well, and let's give a good example, Ron. When you went to school dances in your day, did they have school dances back then? They actually did. <laughs> Where, I played trumpet in the band. Did you ever witness girls grinding against each other on the dance floor? They would have been sent home. What do we have now? I mean, this is just typical stuff. Facebook is full of girls smooching with other girls. I mean, the the societal norms and values have been... Blown away. We've been re-normed in the in the words of, of what was it the uh, the extra west the the editor in January said this is a direct quote from that that homosexual newspaper we will teach your kids the new norms and, and let's close this segment by talking about this very important point and I want your full attention people because this is essential for you to know this is important for you to protect your kids there is a concerted effort to do exactly what you've talked to mm -hmm. re-establish the norm and i'm going to refer to a paper by a professor Catherine mcgregor who's with the university of victoria oh. she also is a proud member she proclaims 41 years with the bc uh, ndp 41 years she's been around a long time She's also featured on the BC Teachers Federation website as being one of their editors for an article. This woman and her ideas that I'm going to share with you are directly affecting your kids. This woman has access to the teachers of yesterday and tomorrow. This is what's going on in the schools. This is what we common sense civil Canadians are harping about continuously and we will continue to do so until our politicians and other people start taking uh, matters seriously because this is why we have to eradicate the public system it has been given over to a bunch of cultural marxists typically through the unions and the ideas of this person now i'm going to quote you directly out of her paper available on the internet norming and reforming challenging the heteronormativity in education policy discourse okay so this is a discussion paper on um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirit, intersexual, queer, and questioning advocates. Okay, so this is directly targeting teachers. It doesn't say anything about hetero in there, does it? Okay. <laughs> well, no, because no, we does. have to do away with that, Ron Gray. We don't belong in their vision of diversity. And I'm going to read you the background here. And this is a direct quote out of this paper. It'll be posted on our website. You can access it yourself. Many scholars have taken up the study of school spaces to trace their effect on queer and questioning youth. They have argued that schools are sexualized spaces that regulate gender and sexuality. Okay, so what, we're, what, what they're saying here is that there's already an underlying sex education going on, and that is heteronormativity, right? Like there's this constant, pervasive, perverted twist on human sexuality that says heterosexuality is normal. Okay. Um, normal. Can't say that. Okay, let me repeat. They have argued that schools are sexualized spaces that regulate gender and sexuality, normalizing heterosexism while simultaneously silencing, marginalizing, rejecting, or, there's that word, <laughs> pathologizing. What the heck does pathologizing mean, Ron? Making a pathology out of being normal. Pathologizing gay youth. They go on and they quote some experts here. Heteronormative sexual norms are part of the everyday experience of students in schools. Duh. 
We would hope. If we want another generation of citizens, yes. Heter okay, I'm going to repeat it. Heteronormative social norms are part of the everyday experience of students in schools and regulate what and who is acceptable. By heteronormative social norms, I mean those practices and discourses that privilege heterosexuality. Are you gasping yet? But explicitly and implicitly in their daily usage, normalize processes which support homo heterosexuality as the elemental form of human association. I thought it was. <laughs> well, that's where you're so wrong, obviously. Uh, oh, oh. And as the very model of inter McGregor, forgive me. The forgive very me. model of intergender relations as the indivisible basis of all community and as the means of reproduction without which a society wouldn't exist. And again they quote the experts. Then she goes on to say here the challenge for educators is to dismantle. Dismantle. Prove it. Does that say dismantle? It says dismantle. They want to dismantle such heteronormative frames that through anti-homophobic or anti-oppressive pedagogies and practices, okay, this yeah. is, again, they quote the experts here, people, legislative and or policy tools are central practices by which such systemic wide measures can be implemented and therefore need to be central concerns of anti-oppressive educators and researchers. In other words, what they're saying is, by using anti-gay, anti-bullying programs, because it's all about the homosexual community, right? They know that they are going to be dismantling important institutions within society, i.e. relationships, man, woman, have children. And they say, no, that the, the fact that we value those things has been a human conditioning. It's not because it works or has standed, stood the test of time. No, we're going to dismantle all that and make anything goes the norm. Is that what I'm reading? That, that's exactly what you're reading. Dismantle heteronormativity. Okay, you need to know this. This isn't about being unkind to somebody who's different, whether they're fat, whether they wear glasses, whether they're athletic or not. This isn't about um, using the classroom to create kind and accepting individuals that respect each other. There is an ulterior motive to these programs, people, that are designed to undermine your family's views, your values, and the people that are promoting these agendas in the schools are those that are teaching your children's teachers. Get informed, people. Be aware. You cannot ignore this. We need to become informed and involved. I'm Carrie Simpson. Thank I'm you for joining us. I'm Ron Gray. We'll see you next time on Culture Guard. Good night, everybody. Great. Hi everybody, I'm Carrie Simpson. And I'm Ron Gray. And this is Culture Guard, Your Kids, a special edition of Culture Guard. And joining us in studio <laughs> is the resident cat. This is the official Roadkill Radio mascot, otherwise known around here as Muggsy, who decided to grace you with her company today.